Hi, Eileen. This is a problem that's similar to the one that you were talking about where you're having a hard time coming up with the, the values for D bar and the standard deviation of D. And um, going through it the long way manually and using all the formulas that you need to solve for these things is doable, but it takes time. And I'm going to make a suggestion to you that uh, I would go for getting as many points as I can accurately in a short amount of time and uh, not satisfy for perfection. The reason I'm saying that is that StatCrunch does not give you the standard deviation of the D values directly. Now you can calculate it using the uh, data compute uh, function uh, but essentially what you're doing, you're just doing those long equations using uh, StatCrunch. And candidly, you can do those long equations faster in Excel than you can in StatCrunch. So I'll be looking at that. I want to get as many of these answers right in the shortest period of time as I have. Uh, you, your final exam and your quizzes are timed. And so uh, I would make that trade-off. But let me show you. Uh, the, the first thing you have to do, of course, is identify the claim and the null and the alternative. The claim is that the scores improve the second time they took the test. Okay. When we're doing a paired sample or really any two sample tests, we're always subtracting the two means. And we are... Um, looking to, to say for the null that there is no difference in the, the means and the alternative is either that there is uh, a difference or that mean 1 is greater than mean 2 or that mean 2 is greater than mean 1. In this case, because we're saying the second test they got better scores, that would mean that mean 2 is greater than mean 1, which would mean the mean difference, mu sub d, would be less than or equal to 0. And the null has to be the complement of that, would be greater than or equal to 0. So the claim is that the scores improve the second time. First thing we need to do is get the critical value and I'm going to just go ahead and click on the little icon there, open up that data in StatCrunch. So we've got our data, but for right now, we're just going to go and get the calculator. We're using the T distribution. We always use the T for paired samples. We need our degrees of freedom, and we've got 14 pairs. So the degrees of freedom would be the number of pairs minus 1 would be 13. Our alpha is 0.01. Because we've got a, a left tail test, remember our alternative, the operator is a less than symbol, points to the left. That means it's a lower tail, one tail test. So we put the entire alpha in there of 0.01. I think that's 0 0.01, yes. And I click on Compute, and we get a critical T value of minus 2.650, which is what they get. And our rejection region is that red area there. Anything, um, any, any T statistic, standardized T statistics is greater than, excuse me, less than, minus 2.65 is in the rejection region and we would reject the null hypothesis. So I'm going to close that for right now. And what I want to suggest to you that would save so much time is that instead of going through these these long calculations, we need to get the test statistic and the uh, D bar and we can get that using the stat, t stats, paired sample, 
paired sample, unfortunately, as I told you, always comes up with raw data. We uh, click on it. Our first data is the first test. Second test, we can ignore the where and group by. We can go ahead and say the differences uh, just in case we uh, have time. I'll show you something. We're going to do the hypothesis test. Remember that when we're doing the hypothesis test, it doesn't matter if we use just the equal because if we're, we're significant for the equal, then either the greater than side is also equal or if we're doing a, a uh, upper tail test, the less than side is always significant. What we do need to do is to get our alternative correct and our mu sub d, the difference, is less than zero because we're saying mu 2 is greater than mu 1. So we click on compute and we get this data and we get a couple of things there. We get a value that's labeled the mean and that is the mean of the differences, D bar. So just remember that this mean of the differences is your D bar, 39.786. And if we look over here in my stat lab, minus 39.786. I'm not sure I said minus there, but that mean that the hypothesis test gives us is our D bar. We also get our standardized test statistic, minus 3.182. And there in our uh, question is the standardized test statistic, correct? Minus 3.182. So we've gotten a lot right very quickly. We don't have the standardized, um, excuse me, the standard deviation of the differences, but um, I would recommend pressing ahead. We've got a p-value that is a lot less than 0.01, so that tells us to reject the null hypothesis. If we go on down here in the problem, uh, it asks us to determine do we reject or fail to reject the standardized test statistic minus 3.182 falls below. It's less than the critical area, critical value of minus 2.650. Therefore, it's in the critical, excuse me, the rejection zone. And that tells us also to reject the null hypothesis. Then we've got to interpret it. Choose the correct answer. And the correct answer is at the 1% significance level, 0.01, there is enough evidence that the critical reading scores improved the second time they took the test. Now, why is that? We're rejecting the null. The null said that there was no difference, or in this case, that the second uh, scores were not better than the first scores. The claim is that the second scores are better. So we go down here at the 1% significance level. There is enough evidence that the, the scores improve the second time. The reason this one is wrong, because it just says there's evidence the critical reading scores got worse the second time, which we prove the opposite. And you can see those others. So that's how you can solve everything except the standard deviation. And, but you can get the majority of the answers and get a pretty doggone good score in a much faster time. I'll show you how to get the uh, standardized uh, standard deviation uh, in a shorter video.